welcome to the Rock Gut Review. I'm Erica. And I'm Ed. And thanks for tuning in on another journey with us. Yeah. What are we drinking today? We are drinking some of the Uncle Nearest Small Batch Whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. So we already did. We already did a review of the Premium Aged Whiskey. Um, you can go check that out in a video somewhere else. Um, and we loved it. Yeah. Yeah. It's absolutely one of my favorite bourbons. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a it, Tennessee whiskey, which is actually a bourbon. We that was discussed before, and I feel like we decided that Tennessee whiskey still counts as bourbon. Yeah. We thought. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. As does the national government. Yeah. So. <laughs> so I think I think we're in the clear there. Okay. But yeah, so Tennessee whiskey is bourbon. It just they put it through an extra step of charcoal filtering before it goes. It once the distillate the distillate goes through charcoal filtering. All right. So, but charcoal filtering does not exclude it. From being bourbon. Yes. So. Is it a square rectangle type of situation? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Tennessee whiskey is bourbon. Bourbon is not Tennessee whiskey. There we go. There you go. We teach it, you things here. Yeah. But it's all whiskey. Anyway, this 1884 Uncle Nearest. Yes. Um, so this is actually the third, well, fourth edition if you count single barrel releases, which we haven't got our hands on yet. There was a white whiskey. Then there's the aged whiskey. Now, there's the small batch whiskey. All right. Yeah. And there's something special about this one. Um, so, uh, Fawn Weaver is the lady behind this. She literally wrote the book on Uncle Nearest. Oh, let's get sniffing as long as we're talking. Okay. Um, she literally w wrote the book on Uncle Nearest. And she started this company. And she selected the, the barrels. These are most likely George Dickel whiskey barrels. But these were... Uh, blended or curated, they say curated, by the descendants of Uncle Nearest themselves. Nice. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's a cool little project. So, and actually it says on the back of each bottle, who did it? So ours was done by V. Uh, A.D. Butler. Nice. So, yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, and if you watched our last video, you know Uncle Nearest was the guy who taught Jack Daniels how to distill. And was left out of the history books because America is racist. Cheers. All right. So what do you get? It's, it smells very bourbony. Yeah. It kind of smells like a wheat whiskey to me. You, you think so? Yeah. Well, there's a lot of barrel here, as far as I can tell. There's a lot of that really charred oakiness. And maybe that's what I'm conflating, like the smell of a wheat whiskey versus just like I don't know younger barrel smell it doesn't I don't think it smells I don't know if it smells young to me not I, younger barrel but yeah it's like a lighter yes. barrel yeah yeah it's a light I think there's I'm trying to decide I don't I don't know exactly what this is yeah. <laughs> it's I don't want to say it's very different from, you know, the regular Uncle Nearest. Well, should we is. pour some Uncle Nearest, regular Uncle Nearest right, right away? So we can to, just smell? Just smell them together. Yeah. But, like, yeah. the nose of this is just, like, you know, pure brown sugar, which is what I absolutely love about it. Yeah. Like, this has some sweet characteristics, but it's a lighter sweetness. This is, like, baking spices sweet. Right. Yeah, I would agree with that. This does seem a lot lighter. Yeah. This does seem... I can see what you mean by like a weeded. I think of it as almost smelling like a weeded bourbon. Yeah. In that, it's light, kind of sweet, kind of grainy, bready. Yeah. But there is. I, I'm getting a lot of barrel influence. I mean, new charred oak. Makes sense. Yeah. Should we get to taste it? Sure. All right. Kind of the same as the nose. Like it's got a. Sweet, yeah, under but still not as sweet as the original. It's kind of a little grassy, yeah, but I would not agree necessarily with that. in a bad way. I would say grassy, a little peanutty, mm. maybe a touch peanutty, and kind of peachy. Okay, like it's not really like a really dark fruit, yeah, but just a really, really light, light fruitiness, like kind maybe of a stone like, fruit. Yeah, I would say maybe not even like eating the peach, but if like licked a peach peel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's very light. It's there's a lot. I feel like this is a lot more barrel influence, just in terms of like tannic woodiness, mm. but not a lot of that really spicy rye grain or anything like that. Yeah. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that since this is a George Dickel whiskey, pretty sure this is a rye mash bill. 
that might explain things. I think I get some of the the less pickly rye characteristics, like that just actual gravyness mm. of it. Yeah. If I remember correctly, they uh, I think they are advertising this as a slightly lighter version. Uh, maybe just a little less okay. uh, uh, punchy than the regular. But I like the punchiness. Oh, I'm just yeah. actually going to... Yeah, let's get into the regular one. Cause, so this one's coming at 93 proof, so 46.5% ABV. That is 100 proof, mm. so 50% ABV. But yeah, yeah, right away you get that strong punchiness of like brown sugar, just just baking, and it's just so pleasant and beautiful. But actually coming off of this, I do kind of pick up the a little bit of the grainier notes now. Mm. But I still get that sweetness that I also love and crave. Yeah, it is. This is, it almost reminds me of brown sugar, like rubbed on meat. Yeah. If you like. Like as a tender at. Yeah. 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 Like something vaguely savory, like brown sugar ham. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah, and this one, the, uh, the so this is 1856, uh, uh, premium Uncle Nearest. Definitely, definitely a heavier smell. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Way punchier. Yeah, this in, is... In, like, the best way possible, though. Like, if you're looking for that in a bourbon, like, look no further. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah, this one's so much bolder. Mm -hmm. So much spicier. That's that one leans towards the dark fruit, the dark cherry. You know, really, really just full throttle. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas this is light, kind of tart in comparison, almost. Okay. Yeah. 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 The 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 Uncle Nearest eighteen eighty four is orchard fruit, kind of like yeah. a lighter fruit, and this is this is really dark boiled fruit. Yeah. Yeah. Which is fantastic. But with the brown sugar added, like it's more than just mm -hmm. the fruit. It's a little bit more complex in that way. Oh, yeah. 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 You still get some tannic oak on both of them, though. For sure. But I feel like the oak is more noticeable on the 100%. 1884. Because I don't think, like the first couple times I've tried this, I don't think I've ever called out the oak on the 1856. Mm -hmm. I don't think I really tasted that oakiness until I followed it. Or, you know, had it just yeah. now after the 84. Yeah. Little bite. There's just a little bite. Yeah. 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 I'm going to add a little water. See? Yeah, let's do it. See what happens. Okay, we're back. It's me. It's her. We're here. Welcome back. We put a little water in this. Let it sit. As we do. Yeah. Are you... Are you smelling much of a difference? I, I, I'm not really... I don't know if I'm searching for it, but I'm like... It, I think it's kind of bringing out those brown sugary notes. But pull, yeah, pull that away from me. Like, definitely not the same punch, but... Yeah. I don't... I don't get that. Stiff mine. I don't know if I like the amount of water I added. Uh, yeah, maybe a little. Okay. Maybe maybe there is a little bit of brown sugar there, but I'm, I'm really but not it's, getting much. That's fair. It's yeah. very hard to compare it to the original and just be like, man, that is a punch. Mm -hmm. All right, let's taste. That's okay. Yeah. That's not bad. There's there's something here with the water added. Like it comes out, there's a little bit more spice characteristic that comes out when you add water. Yeah. But it's it feels like it's holding back almost. Yeah. Which I think. And I'm scared to add more water because I just, wouldn't. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to drown it. I think this one is nice. Mm -hmm. It's it's pleasant and it's uh, um, got some nice things going for it. Yeah. But it's not the original. Yeah. The original is just so damn good. So good. Yeah. So good. And this one is good, but not so good. Yeah. Never. Oh. So good. I have to live with this. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Whose fault is that? Yeah, that is Uncle Nearest, 1884. Really cool project, making some really cool whiskey. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, bringing some light to a, you know, the African American roots of distilling in America. Yeah. So that's cool. Neat stuff. Yeah. Um, for my money, 
I'm sticking with the 1856. 100%. Let's reshoot that. <laughs> But yeah, you know, again, stick with the original. I think it's this is also really pleasant, but you know, 100% go with the 1856. If you haven't bought a bottle, I highly recommend it. And you know, it's a cool story, shining light on, you know, a kind of an untold story about African Americans in the distilling process, which yeah. I think is really neat. Yeah. So yeah. Absolutely. And that's, I think that's something whiskey needs to do more of. Yeah. Is, is. Highlight. The representation of other people in exactly. whiskey, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, we've talked about this on the show before. Like, if whiskey marketers aren't thinking about trying to sell to black folks, yeah. they're missing out on a really good population to sell to. Yeah. And women. I think, you know, whiskey kind of just gets this whole community being, like, white men. I think there's other markets that, yeah. you know, they could easily appeal to. Well, and I think that's changing. Yeah. And I think the people who, the kind of people who follow our channel and hang out with our community are the kind of people who want that to change. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I, I think I, I think most people on WhiskeyTube are past the point where they, they're trying to cut people out of the process. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah. But, anyhow... This has been the Rock Up Review. We are so glad you stopped by. Yeah. Um, Hopefully you'll come again. Yeah. yeah. We love it when you come. I'm not even going to do that. Nope. Nope. My dad watches this show. <laughs> All right. And until next time, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, comment. Tell your friends. And until next time, stay, stay rotten. rotten.